Um, what you've got here is my very wobbly robot arm, which is quite literally held together with a piece of blue tack my seven-year-old daughter gave me. But actually, the robot arm is not really the point. That's just a facilitator to be able to, to show the fact that you've seen this slide before, where we can run .NET everywhere from IoT through web and cloud, uh, desktop, mobile gaming, and AI. And this demo touches on all of those bits, actually. So what I've got here um, is the code that's running on the Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm not going to dive into the code because we've only got 15 minutes. Um, but really what it is is um, uh, some code that allows me to be able to control uh, the servos, these little motors that are connected to the, the parts of the 3D printed robot arm. So there's three, actually. There's one here called the grab, essentially. So these little pincers that you can see. One that, wrote, uh, that controls the amount of reach that it's got. And then another that you can't see underneath there, which is where the blue tack is, which is controlling the rotation of the robot arm. So normally, if you come and see a talk by me, it's going to be about something like IoT Hub. But I wanted a real-time control mechanism for this, that I could move the arm in, uh, in real time rather than having to wait for, for commands to filter the way through a system. So to do that, I've used a Blazor app. So just here. Uh, is a Blazor, hosted Blazor WebAssembly application. So this is the WebAssembly front end part that you can see there. That's that same feed that's coming from the camera with my robot arm, no trickery, it's live. Um, and then below it, I've got some sliders that let me move the robot arm. So if I'd refresh it, because it loses its connection if you're not careful. And then we can move the robot arm. So you should be able to see at least those that are close enough at the front. The robot arm moving around. So that's the reach element just there, moving in and out. And this is all working through my hotspot on my phone using mobile data rather than the Wi-Fi, because that wouldn't work for some reason. So it's slightly jerky, but actually it's not too bad. This is hosted in the UK. So we're over here on the, uh, on the West Coast, and it's, it's still not too bad. Uh, obviously, if I was to host that over here, we'd get slightly less latency with that, but it's okay. It works quite nicely. But already what we've got here are the IoT and the, uh, the web and the cloud elements of this diagram before we've even started. And this is .NET in all of those places. Uh, and it's all using SignalArv in its hub. So I mentioned this was a hosted Blazor website. The hosted part, the ASP.NET Core backend, has got a SignalR hub sitting on there. Uh, and those messages are being sent from the WebAssembly front end here to that hub. And then the hub is broadcasting that, actually, to everything that's connected to it. So once we've got that, we can move on to some other elements, like a MAUI app. So if I drag my MAUI app across here a little bit and then pull it down. Uh, don't judge me on my UI skills. It's not really the part of the talk. Um, but just here, very similar looking. Of course, we're going to be using XAML here rather than um, Razor and HTML. But the whole idea is the exact same. So it'll move left and right, and it'll reach forwards and backwards. A bit janky looking. It is wobbly. I quite like it. Gives it some style. Uh, and then some grab. Um, I mean, you could, you could reach around with this and you know, grab your favorite street waffles if you're Danish or something like that. But uh, you can go ahead and do, uh, do what you like with that. But of course, now that it's Maui, we can deploy that to a mobile phone as well. And I've done that, because otherwise my diagram wouldn't work. So I can load that up. I'm going to hold it under this camera, which isn't the best idea. I could have casted to here, but it's not going to handle everything. Sorry. But that's the exact same Maui app. And not going to be easy for you to see, but I can do the same rotation and reach. So you can see that. And you can see in the background there that it's all synced up. So the, the Blazor website is reflecting the changes that I'm making on there as well. Oh, Inception look. So uh, that's cool. So I mean, now we've got IoT, web, cloud, desktop, and mobile, all the, almost the exact same code, actually. Very little difference as far as the clients connecting to the hub's concerned. But I didn't really want to stop there when I was making this demo. So we've got the gaming element in there with Unity. And if you've not tried it before, Unity allows you to be able to create 3D worlds, essentially. And you can power it with .NET as well. So this bit takes a little playing, because I've got to cast it to here for you to be able to see it. 
So, let's see if I can get that to work. Right, wait one sec. It's coming, I promise. So actually, what you can do while I'm loading this is you can interact. If you've got your phone, you can scan that QR code or you can just go ahead and old school type it in and you too can move the robot arm. And in fact, the first time I gave this demo, one of my friends had moved to New Zealand uh, and he dialed into the, the talk I was giving. Look, people are doing it. It, it will fall over. Or probably, you know, unwire itself at some point. But it's fun and actually required for my demo. So if I can cast this. Yeah, don't break it until I've done, done this part, yeah? <laughs> so if I go back here, then give this a sec. Hopefully this will catch up. Yeah, it's doing it. There we are. So if you move the arm, God, there's enough of you. There you are. So you can see the arm moving when you're moving it out there. And of course, I can move it in here as well. You can change the grab and the reach, which is nice. I quite like that. And again, this is all .NET. So nothing particularly special. The, the Oculus part is a little bit more complicated because, well, at least when I did it, uh, trying to get your DLLs, all of that stuff into Unity, quite difficult. So I picked it up again recently and everything's changed and it broke everything and I managed to get it just about working. Only I couldn't figure out why I was 16 foot tall, which is not nice for a little five foot eight guy. Um, so yeah, but again, we've got, uh, back to my, oh, back to this slide, look. So now we've got IoT, web, cloud, desktop, mobile, and gaming. And I've just had to follow two fantastic AI sessions. And I'm glad I planned ahead. So I thought I'd add a little bit of AI into my talk. But to do that, I've got to kill this application because it decides that it's going to get locked up. Go away. You can go away. Hurry up. Oh, oh don't let me down now. There we go. Uh, hold on. Oh, that's a shame. It's not going to let me kill it. Right at the very end. Tell you what I'll do while that's disappearing. This is the code that you use to control the robot arm. There's not actually that much to it. I'm assuming we've got at least one .NET developer in here. So this is all .NET 7, but actually it doesn't really matter. This will go all the way back to .NET Core 3.1 if you want, because I've not used anything particularly fancy. But what I've got here is um, three what's called PWM channels. Now, these servo motors work by sending little pulses backwards and forwards to them, and that will position the servo motor depending on where you want it to go. And so the Raspberry Pi is quite good at doing that. It's not as good as an actual microcontrolling device because the timings, I've got an operating system underneath it, but it's got a hardware PWM channel in there. So it's not, it's not perfect. You can see it's, it's a little bit janky when you're doing it, but it does work. And you create three of those and start them up. And then you create a connection out to the SignalR hub, which as I say, that's running up in Azure happily. And really it's a chat app when you all intents and purposes. And I've done all of this specifically to show that you can go and create yourself IoT solutions, or in fact, any sort of solution, pretty much just by following a tutorial and then usurping bits of it. So you can see here that we receive a message and it's looking at a user and a message, just like if you do a signal R chat app tutorial, that's what you're gonna be doing. And you'll have um, a user, which will be the servo, the motor, the, the reach or the grab that you want to control. Uh, and then the message is the amount that you need to move it by. And it's as simple as that, really. So when I receive that particular message, then I go ahead and, and move the arm. Uh, it's slightly different on the client side because it sends that message out with those users and those messages sitting on there. Your robot arm happily moves away. I'm disappointed in my .NET uh, application not wanting to die. I 
gone, it's gone. I can do it now. Brutal. That was just rude, wasn't it? Right, good. You'll see on the left-hand side, this is the piece that I added. It made me wait, and I can control it with my voice. Let's see, hopefully it works now. Rotate the arm by 50 degrees. Ah, I don't know if you saw that. Reach by 50 degrees. There we go. Now, obviously it's not amazing. Sorry, but awesome talks before me were way better than that. But this is using uh, cognitive language understanding and the speech API. And again, actually, the, the interface is awesome. I was just evangelizing about how good it was. But this allows you to be able to, the speech part recognizes my voice and converts that to text. Uh, and then the cognitive language understanding takes that text, figures out the intent. And you can see the intent ID is move arm. So that's the, uh, if you like, the, the model, but it's not really a model. You'd have a better word for that. The collection of, of different um, sort of parts of that model grouped together. And then within that, down at the bottom down here, we get um, two parts. The, the action, which in that case was reach, and then the amount. Um, and what it's essentially what it's doing, this, this Maui app, is just taking those bits from the API, grabbing out the bits it needs, and then using SignalR to send that exact same message that all of the other bits are doing, and everything's all talking to each other. So you get IoT literally everywhere. Now, I've kind of cheated with AI because I'm not really doing ML.NET because that's a bit more complicated than I wanted to do for this, but I am using the .NET APIs to be able to interface the rest of this system together. So I'm, I'm happy that I satisfied that last box, <laughs> for me anyway. So um, yeah, by all means, um, go ahead, scan that QR code, and that'll take to the, the source code. All of the source code for everything I've shown is on there. I've got a blog post on how you get .NET 7 on the Pi. Uh, there's a single line install script that will get .NET 7 in there, it does .NET 5, 6, and 7, you choose one, uh, and some examples on how to get started, uh, and then some of the libraries and the, the arms, so you can see that from the presentation, that's just one I've got off a of Thingiverse, and then put together badly, which is so wobbly, but it works, it's all good. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.